Hey, my name is Ashley Hibbert, and I am here to discuss the importance of Noah Webster in the first American Dictionary of the English Language. Noah Webster was born October 16, 1758 in West Hartford, Connecticut. He held a complex yet interesting 85 years of life. Early on in his life, he decided to leave his family farm to focus on himself as well as his dreams. He graduated from Yale University in 1778, deciding to focus on law. Although he graduated for law, Webster decided to accomplish many things within his life. He took part in a comic opera expedition as a volunteer in the American Revolution. He then served as a teacher, received legal education, and then created his first spelling book. Webster contributed to many significant pieces of work in different areas of expertise. To the creation of the Constitution, American Magazine, America Minerva, to the creation of the Magnificent and American Dictionary of the English Language in, 19, in 1828. He even created an American version of the Bible. Noah Webster grew up on a farm that was, very diver that was not very diverse in itself, while the rest of the world was. French was the language of Vermont and Maine, Dutch was the language of New York, and German was the language of Pennsylvania. The language within the Revolutionary Army was so bad that it drew Webster into the art of language. Observing the troops in Newburgh, New York after the war, Webster understood what was happening. No one could understand one another by speaking different languages, which caused them to fight even though they were united as one within the war. Webster created, Webster came to the conclusion that only one uniform method of speaking would unite the Americans together peacefully, creating a common language. He then gave up law for teaching. He opened up his own academy to fix the chaos of 18th century American speech. He decided to change the traditional alphabetical method of teaching to one that emphasized syllables and sounds. As he continued his work, he realized that he lacked any materials needed to accomplish his goals, so then he had to begin writing the works himself, including children's books and so on and so on. He resulted in creating the American Spelling Book, which he grouped words by sounds, used homophones to construct jokes, and emphasized, emphasized syllables. His spelling book was very popular among his peers, in which he decided to then publish it. In this time period, the Articles of the Confederation made copyright a difficult thing for authors to do. To copyright his book, Webster had to petition each of the 13 legislators separately. He then, he then did so in creating the very first American book tour. On this tour, Webster met James Madison, who actually borrowed almost all of Webster's concepts for his own, thus making Noah Webster one of one of an important, an important founding father that he has been given credit for. Contributing to America in a whole because of his success and founding fathers barring Webster's work, at least one part of the Constitu Constitution was actually adopted from Noah Webster himself. An American dictionary took Webster about 28 years to finish with him learning almost 26 different languages to fully understand the meaning of words, he, ve he very was dedicated to his work. Webster believed that in America, the people should control the language just like they do the government. It makes no sense to not. Although Webster was a devoted Christian, he did not add passages from the Bible because he wanted everyone to understand where he was coming from. Instead, he added the American Revolution. An American Dictionary of the English Language would become the Bible for native poets. That way, it was easier for everyone to understand as a whole. And even, the, and even George Washington looked up to Webster and asked him his views on the nation's future, which is pretty extravagant. But 